Hello, this is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we have with us Lisa Gibellario, Prevention Specialist with Wayside Youth and Family Support Network, and she's coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Today, we're getting an update on COVID. The numbers are down, vaccine availability is increasing, schools are moving toward reopening. Many of us are wondering when the masks can come off. So, Lisa, can you start off by giving us a quick snapshot of where things are at? Sure, I'll just expound on what you said, Mike, which is, you know, there are reasons to be hopeful. Um, the numbers are improving. I'll just say for Massachusetts, there are less people right now in this snapshot testing positive, less people in hospitals and less people dying overall. So that's encouraging. Um, of course, we know it's a very fluid situation, not a static one. So anything seems to uh, be possible. But for right now, I would encourage people to continue being cautious and careful, but um, to allow the good news to wash over us. There are some reasons to be hopeful. So Lisa, let me ask you about where things stand with vaccines. We're now in our third month of the rollout of vaccines. What's important for people to know? Well, I would say, yep, we're in the third month. We're still in phase two though, Mike. So um, that is specifically for people who are 65 and over or those who have underlying conditions. Um, but teachers are now coming online um, as well as other public health workers, sanitation workers. So more people are coming online, which is great news, but of course it does slow the rollout a little bit because in Massachusetts alone, there are over 400,000 teachers. Um, but phase two is chugging along. So that's great news. Phase three is expected to begin either in April or early May. And phase three takes in more of the general population. So that's encouraging news. I guess what I would say for people, Mike, is that if you can get on a wait list, um, if you're in the general population and, and are kind of eager for your turn, you've been waiting since early January, so that's understandable, you know, see what wait lists you can get on. Maybe your primary care physician has a wait list. I know that Belmont, um, our own health department had a list and they were kind of, you know, going through it. It started with people over 75, of course, back in phase one. So maybe check in with the health department and see if that list is still viable. But um, just, you know, obviously stay on top of it, but see if there's any way to get on any wait list. Okay. Um, also, this is an important question that many people have, Lisa. Are the vaccines pretty much the same? According to the CDC, yes, the vaccines are pretty much the same. There are some differences, but they are all three successful at doing what they're supposed to do, which is to prevent people from getting sick, um, prevent people from landing in the hospital. So um, they're a little bit different though. So Pfizer and Moderna are the two that rolled out first and they have, um, they're a two shot process. So with Pfizer, you get an initial shot, then an appointment three weeks later for the follow-up shot. Two weeks after that, you're pretty close to fully vaccinated. Moderna was similar with just a slightly longer duration between shot number one and shot number two. And the great news about the Johnson & Johnson shot is that it's a one-shot deal. Um, less side effects are being reported with that one. Um, some of the numbers that came out initially, uh, it, it appeared, Mike, that the, um, Johnson & Johnson was less effective, but I've been told by scientists that um, you really can't compare because the trials were done at very different times in the pandemic with different populations and that the Johnson & Johnson is doing exactly what, again, what it's supposed to be doing, preventing mortality and morbidity. So um, there are some differences, um, but all so far effective. All right, Lisa, so let's, let's move on. Oh, actually, I wanna ask you um, about um, our kids. Is there any possibility that our kids will be getting the green light for vaccines anytime soon? So not anytime soon. I was on a webinar actually yesterday with Dr. Fauci. I was one of thousands of people and he gave some updates. Um, one of which was that young people are currently in trials. They're, they're, they're being studied. He hoped that by fall, high school age students would begin to be eligible. The trials would have wrapped up um, and hopefully they go smoothly. Um, so high school students in the fall and then middle school and elementary students, probably he said early 2022. So again, studies are happening, but no time soon. 
Okay, Lisa. So let's move on and talk about the COVID variants. Um, uh, these are the mutated forms of the virus, and, and they're popping up in some places. How concerned should we be? So according again to Dr. Fauci, he said there is reason for some concern, but not for hysteria at all. This was expected. Viruses mutate. It is what they are known to do. The medical science community that is studying COVID-19 has been expecting this all along. So um, the United Kingdom variant in particular is, is in the U.S. It is there is some concern that it's a more contagious strain of COVID-19 than what we had been dealing with, but the situation is being monitored carefully. What do we know about the effectiveness of the vaccines against these variants? So far, so good. So there's reason to be cautiously optimistic. Uh, the three vaccines that are being used here in the U.S. are so far effective against these variants, but that is a wait and watch and, and pay close attention situation. But so far, the news is encouraging. All right, Lisa. So we're entering our second pandemic spring, um, and a number of people have, th have questions about what we can expect next, um, including, you know, is it safe for our kids to be hanging out together more? So, um, Yes and no. Uh, according to the CDC, um, there, there, is, there are reasons to be hopeful, but of course our kids by and large are not vaccinated yet. So I would say that outdoors, absolutely. Let the kids hang out outdoors. We know from a year plus of data that outdoor transmission is very low. I would say for an unvaccinated crowd, Mike, where, the, where you know, nobody's been vaccinated, still exercise caution and use the precautions if you are indoors. Keep the numbers small, keep the masks on, keep the sanitizer nearby, and keep the windows open if at all possible. So indoors, there's still reason to be cautious. Outdoors, I'd say the kids can gather. And as you know, the CDC released um, some information yesterday, which those guidelines basically said for the vaccinated crowd, you know, you can definitely start to put the mask away if you are um, with other vaccinated people, and even if you're with people who aren't vaccinated. So um, some reasons to be hopeful and some reasons to still exercise caution, I would say. All right. And how about things like uh, summer vacations uh, for the family or enrolling a child in summer camp? Are these things that we can expect to do this year? So it's hard to say. I, I think that, again, being cautiously optimistic, I would advise families to, sure, if you're, if you're planning a summer vacation, just be cognizant of where that vacation is being planned. You know, we're still really not allowed outside of the U.S. There are places, there are certain states that, you know, the, where restrictions may have been lifted quite early, and I might be careful about going to those states. But if you're going to stay in New England, yeah, I think you could plan a summer vacation. I think camps, I know that they're open. They are taking applications. So I think it's probably okay to proceed with, with a reasonable summer vacation and with some outdoor camps for children. Again, we don't know for sure. The situation is dynamic. But as of you know, the March 9th snapshot, I'd say it's looking good. Um, Dr. Fauci on the webinar was cautiously optimistic for the summer. He thought that there were reasons to be hopeful. And of course, the medical science community will keep a close eye on the variants and a close eye on the data that's coming out from the vaccinations. All right, Lisa. So it's important to know that we can start planning to go about our lives, but it's also still important to take precautions um, is my takeaway. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I tend to be uh, one of the public health professionals that errs on the side of caution. Um, so coming from me, I would say yes, um, okay. reasons to be hopeful and proceed cautiously. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. It's, it's, it's an important update. And I know that, that people want to know how they should plan their lives as we're entering this um, pandemic spring. So um, we'll see you next time. And thanks again so much. Thank you, Mike.